think I came out in 2018. It's been a good journey. It's been, I've been able to help a lot of people that Mm -hmm. I never really would have imagined. Not everyone needs to come out, but if you are comfortable and feel okay doing that, you really should. Because I have seen some conversations in the gay community of a lot of people who are like, why do we need to come out? It's not necessary. Straight people don't come out about their sexuality. Why should gay people? We should just normalize it. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Just a Physician, the podcast where we explore mental health, vulnerability, and personal life journeys. So if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel and listen to new episodes out every Thursday, wherever you listen to your podcasts. We have a very special guest and actually a returning guest because you have been on my YouTube channel once before. A long time ago. Why, yeah, a, a while ago. ago. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, girls, gays, and theys, please welcome <laughs> Tad Fujikawa. Woo! thank you for having me of course thanks so much for coming on um i am really excited to have you on because well first of all let me give a little bit of background story we are currently in new york city (laughs) in my tiny ass hotel room (laughs) filming with the most ratchet podcast setup you have ever seen i mean i'm telling you we have the microphone propped between two suitcases no one needed to know that oh well yeah, you know, but the, the people want to know. The people want answers. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It was a little bit of a setup, but we're here. We're doing it. We're both in New York City together, and I thought it would just be like a perfect time to, um, you know, to just like chat. And I'm really excited about what this episode is going to be about because we're going to be responding and answering your guys' questions. But first, I want you to give like a little introduction of yourself. Like, who the fuck are you? Um, I'm Hiram's friend. <laughs> <laughs> no. uh, we are though. Yeah, 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 we are. We are very good friends. Um, no, I'm uh, I'm Tad Fujikawa. I am uh, I'm from Hawaii. Um, I am a well used to be a professional golfer. Um, I had a lot of success um, when I was younger uh, playing professional golf, and um, I was the first um, male professional golfer to come out as gay. Woo. So um, that so was. Cool. Uh, that was a, a, a pretty cool thing, um, and I've been able to, you know, obviously help other people through that and, and sort of use that platform, um, you know, to, to make a difference in others' lives, and um, I feel very uh, grateful, you know, for that opportunity. Yeah, it's so cool, like, um, your experience coming out, because we've, we've been friends a long time, and we are friends before you actually came out, and mm-hmm. I remember, you know, connecting and talking about that together. Um, and you kind of grappling with like what the consequences Mm -hmm. of that decision would be and your, you know, kind of anxieties and fears around that and being able to see, you know, you come out, Mm -hmm. um, so publicly, um, which is like a super scary move in a very traditional sport and environment. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, sports overall, let alone golf specifically, like, and to see that there was such a positive response and feedback to it. I remember like when you came out looking at like the announcement Instagram posts and like seeing the comments and just seeing how many people were so supportive and happy for you. It just, mm-hmm. it was such a beautiful um, thing to witness. And yeah, y'all like Tad and I have been friends for so long. It's been <laughs> such, such a fun journey. I mean, how long? Five years, six years, um, five. I've lost track. Quite think, a long time. Yeah, it's no, some, I think longer like than that. five. Really? Yeah, man. I'm really, I'm always bad at yeah. these. <laughs> I think it's longer than five. Oh, okay. Okay. I'm not 100% sure of that. We've been friends for a while, basically. We're bad friends. We can't even remember when we I met. I know. So. I know. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. It's mutual. Yeah. We're such close friends we are, I guess. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, we've, we've been able to see each other go through like a lot of shit. And that was yeah. like the one experience, I think. Well, there's, of course, many different, you know, life journeys that I've been able to see you go through. But that Mm -hmm. specific one is one of the main reasons I wanted to have you on the podcast, uh, because what we did, um, I asked you guys some questions on my Instagram, um, just asking you guys if you had any questions around coming out, um, you know, how to support people who are gay or part of the LGBT plus community. Just any questions you guys have in relation to that. I think it's a really important topic to talk about always, but especially right now where I think there is a lot of discourse around support for the LGBT plus community. I mean, there's a lot of like, you've seen like the legislation um, in certain states and 
the yeah. oppression that's you know kind of playing out right yeah. now yeah i mean i just feel like um you know we took some steps forward but now we're also taking a few steps back yeah. and, um, it's frustrating i mean you know it's uh it's not anything good obviously but um yeah i mean it's it's just sad to see uh you know some of the things that are happening right now and um it's frustrating on on our end i think yeah it's like super frustrating it's very disappointing which is why i think it's like more important that we have these conversations and like talk Mm -hmm. about issues related to the lgbt plus community and specifically answer your guys's questions around it because for anyone who may be a part of the community or maybe not yet but they want to be are afraid of coming out um don't know how they can best support people who need to come out like um I think I think it's important that we talk about these things and share our own personal experiences and maybe even a little bit of advice to anyone out there who is listening. So we've already done this once before, so mm-hmm. this is going to be really enjoyable doing it again because I think this is an evergreen topic, you know, something that we always need to be discussing. But right. yeah, we're going to be responding to a bunch of your guys' questions. Um, I'm really excited about it. So thank you to everyone who um, submitted them on Instagram. And also, as we start this episode, y'all should go follow Tad as well what's your instagram handle where can the people find you um my instagram is taddy 808 t-a-d-d-y 808 go do it people get on it thank you (laughs) (laughs) okay so the first question is from jamie which i think i recognize your questions from previous podcast episodes thank you for asking them (laughs) um it's how did you first realize you were gay um do you want to go first um I know how to answer that. <laughs> uh, well, I don't know. I mean, it, it was, it took me kind of a long time to accept myself. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I've, looking back at it, I probably had shown signs or knew that I was um, not straight mm-hmm. <laughs> for a long time. Mm-hmm. But for me to actually accept myself, it took me a while. And um, I mean, I don't know. How do, how do you know that you're gay? I mean, like That's for me, thing, it was yeah. just like, if I put a, female and a male next to each other my eyes will sh- go straight to the male first mm-hmm. and that's sort of like wow that's so gay bro <laughs> <laughs> well, well thank you <laughs> i am so thank you <laughs> uh, yeah i mean whenever people ask that question i understand where the question is coming from but i think on our end it is a little bit like confusing and disorienting to know exactly like how to respond because usually what I like to do is kind of like flip the question and be like well when did you first realize you were straight Mm -hmm. it's not necessarily something that like you have a bright light shine down from the sky and doves fly up speak for yourself yeah and just a rainbow (laughs) fly exactly it's not this like super defining moment all at once it's just kind of something that as you kind of get to the age where you start start to show interest in you know, anyone, Mm -hmm. uh, which I think for a lot of, yeah, yeah, that sort of thing. Yeah. I think for a lot of people, it's like middle school age, maybe like high school age when they start to get their first crushes or, you know, stuff like that. But it really depends on the individual person. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and I think, I don't know, like, I'd be curious to hear your experience because I think there's realizing you're gay as in homosexual Mm -hmm. versus realizing that you don't fit within the societal masculine expected traits if that makes sense which i don't know what your experience is so like for me mm-hmm. i didn't necessarily know i was attracted to men until my attraction you know hormones started <laughs> but like from a very young age i think it was pretty obvious to people close to me mm-hmm. that i was not like other people boys i guess you could say like i liked feminine things i liked girly things i had a higher pitched voice i presented myself in a more feminine way which a lot of people would be like oh that kid is gay you know mm-hmm. if they saw that but truthfully not you know you, no not, one really knows at that, that age but i don't know what your thoughts yeah, are yeah yeah i mean like i think um society has taught us that like you have this preconceived idea of what is gay and what mm-hmm. is not you know yeah. what i mean and um that's not always the case because i know mm-hmm. a lot of somewhat gay acting men that are Mm. straight yeah you know and and it's not always cookie cutter like black and white um and you know now i guess it's become um a little bit even more difficult to identify what you are what you aren't you know Mm -hmm. and and 
um, I don't know. It's 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 a really really difficult situation to sort of answer that in a mm-hmm. black and white sort of way. And it's um, everyone has their own journey, so yeah. uh, it, it's 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 just, it's just really tough um, yeah. to to have like a definitive answer on that. Yeah, exactly. I mean, honestly, <laughs> I just think like if you are someone straight, you know, asking that question and watching this, I would just ask you kind of the same question. Like, when did you realize you were straight? Yeah. You don't really know until you just kind of until it happens. Figure it out. Yeah, yeah. Until, until it, it just happens. happens, and you're like, "Oh, okay, I'm, yeah. I'm that." So I know for me, it was like I think really when I started realizing it was like I guess middle school age mm. when I started to develop like crushes and stuff. Um, but I personally didn't accept it until I was in high school, like my senior year of high school. Mm-hmm. That's when I was like, "Okay, this isn't going away. This mm-hmm. isn't a phase. Mm-hmm. Right, <laughs> yeah. right, right, right. Yeah. This is like no, this exactly. is who I am, and I have to accept it. You know, mm-hmm. so." Yeah, yeah, it was kind of the same for me. I mean, looking back at it, I probably sh- had signs of it when I was, I don't know, sixth or seventh grade, mm-hmm. but I didn't really, you know, accept it within myself until probably, shoot, almost 20, maybe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. quite a long while. Yeah. Um, and it's just a lot of just like fighting with who should I be, yeah. who I want to be what I really feel and then also like what society tells me to be exactly you know so you have all these conflicting things like telling you these mixed messages Mm -hmm. and um, that's why it's so hard like and and that's why everyone's journey is so different and um, you know nowadays I mean I feel old I say nowadays but um, (laughs) you know like when I was in high school and trying to figure all that shit out like Mm -hmm no one was really as open as they are now yeah oh, so it's changed a the, lot yeah the education on that has changed drastically so i think you're seeing more people come out mm-hmm. um as lgbtq plus but you also see them come out at a younger age mm-hmm. because there is that education and the openness that um you know that it's okay to talk about it yeah with, with people you know what i mean so yeah. um so yeah, I mean, I, I think uh, I think we've come a long way in that sense, and mm-hmm. I it's great. You know, I I wish I wish I had that when I was. I know, you know. same. No, it just makes me happy for everyone who Seriously. is coming out now versus yeah. when we did. Because Absolutely. wow, it has it been it's revolutionary change that I think is so so good. So mm-hmm. hopefully that answered your question in a very roundabout way. Yeah. <laughs> Stella asked, "When did you come out?" I guess I can go first yeah. for this one. Um, I. It kind of depends on coming out to who. The first person I ever came out to was my friend Grace in high school when I was a senior. Um, And then in college is when I started coming out pretty much to like most of the people who are close to me in my life. Mm -hmm. Um, I think it was my second year of college that I came out to my family. And then a year after that is when I came out to the world the you know world. like you know posting about it and stuff like that um i i think i was 20 22 21 something like that when i like officially formally came out but um to people close in my life like i knew and for a while i thought like oh it's not even necessary that i need to like make this like public announcement, announcement coming yeah. out because the people in my life already know until i realized that you know like uh, the power of a single story is is really significant and mm-hmm. you don't know how, who out there may not feel accepted may not feel like they are able to accept that part of themselves or mm-hmm. come out to the people in their life and they may look to you as kind of like an example of mm-hmm. someone who can do it and be okay yeah. so i know that's why i personally like mm-hmm. officially came out right. but how about for you yeah so to just sort of add on to that last comment um about like helping others to to come out and Mm -hmm. you know i don't want to say be an inspiration but um showing them that it's okay Mm -hmm. you know and and um like that's actually what you did for me so Mm. um (laughs) honestly like the main reason why that i came out was because i saw Hiram come out and um obviously like he gave me the, the, the support as well um so that helped but um you know actually seeing someone that i was close with um go through that process and um you know come out on the good side of it like uh that made me feel a little bit more confident in my decision as well and then it also made me want to do it for other people mm-hmm. because i saw the impact that it had on me and um you know i wanted to do the same for others and so to answer the question i think i came out in 2018 um 
can't remember if it was September or October. Um, I believe it was September. And um, yeah. yeah, it's been it's been a good journey. Mm -hmm. It's been a good journey. It's been I've been able to help a lot of people that mm -hmm. I never really would have imagined mm -hmm. um, that I would be able to do. So that you know that was sort of like a a, a bonus. Mm -hmm. um, but it's been a, it's been great. I mean, I've had so many amazing opportunities through that, and um, you know, obviously being able to change someone's life for the better, mm -hmm. um, you know, has been been really special as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think like honestly, I think it's your experience with coming out is exactly why I think not everyone needs to come out, but if you are comfortable like um and feel okay doing that you really should because i have seen some conversations in the gay community of a lot of people who are like why do we need to come out it's not necessary like uh straight people don't come out okay. about their sexuality right. why should gay people we should just right. normalize it um which i totally get and i think like down the road in the future mm -hmm. uh it will be so normalized that like that's what's expected however like there are so many people still to this day who are raised in extremely yeah. homophobic households in mm -hmm. extremely homophobic communities. And there's still so many religions out there preaching that being gay is a sin. Mm -hmm. So while those things continue to happen, I think it is so important that people need to come out and share their stories Absolutely. because whether it's in your own personal community or whether it's someone, you know, a, a stranger online, you don't know how that story could really positively impact them and show them that, uh you know it's okay it's, okay. it's fine yeah. cuz yeah. i think with the world overall i know like um when i've heard like straight people talk about like the world and its relative acceptance to being gay in the lgbt plus community um i think a lot of people tend to look a little bit too wide lens mm -hmm. at all of it um a, a lot of you know i've heard religious people who are like oh like why do pe why are people worried about coming out or like everybody's gay now like it's mm -hmm. like no one thinks it's a big deal anymore but I think in home environments, yeah. it's a very different story. I think we still Absolutely. have a long time before like actual change is going to make, which is why I think coming yeah. out is really important. I don't know. What do you think? Yeah, I, I absolutely agree. I mean, I contemplated that with myself and my journey as well. You know, like, do I really have to come out or mm -hmm. can I just live the way I want to? And, you know, that's fine. And, and mm -hmm. you know, the, the reality is like, yeah, you can you don't have to come out like that's mm -hmm. perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. However, um, in my experience, like, you know, you see, you still see a lot of hate towards mm -hmm. our community. A lot. And my, from my viewpoint is as long as that continues to happen, coming out can be beneficial for not yeah. only yourself, but, um, for, for other people as well. And, and I know for me, when I came out, even though I'd already, I had already accepted like me being gay, mm -hmm. um, when I came out, it was liberating. Mm -hmm. Like I felt good. Yeah, I felt good, and um, I felt stronger because mm -hmm. I had, I don't want to say admitted that, but actually like shared that and been one hundred percent open with mm -hmm. everyone. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's not just okay the select few that know. Yeah. And the other people are kind of teeter tottering on that. Is he or is he not? You know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, you know, for me, it, it felt like um, sort of a boost in my maybe confidence a little bit yeah. in, in myself um, when I did come out. I think it takes a lot of pressure off, to be honest. I know that was the case for me because it was like, look, me before coming out versus me after coming out, same person. Yeah. There's like not much is really going to change. Mm -hmm. um, but I feel like the pressure, the relief that you feel after coming out because you're Absolutely. like, I don't feel like I have to be worried about putting on a front, mm -hmm. pretending to be someone else, worried about like if people are going to notice or find out if I right. am gay. You know, all these little things that you kind of constantly think about, you don't really have to worry about anymore, which is why I think like coming out, even though it seems like such a scary thing, it's actually the most like liberating, freeing, and just mm. wonderful experience. And, and that's coming from me and my personal experience of coming out, which was not great all around. It's got off to a very rocky, rocky start, but mm -hmm. I still don't regret it, you know, because yeah. it, you just feel so just like, Oh my God, I can just be open. myself and yeah. be open. And I yeah. don't Authentic. have to stress. Authentic. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. 
So this person asked, was coming out an isolating experience? How did you find community? I think that's a really good question. Um, do you want to respond to it first? Um, sure. Uh, was it an isolating experience? Um, no, I think it was quite the opposite. Mm-hmm. For, for me, my experience was very positive. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, I, I do know a lot of people who have had sort of the, the opposite response where mm-hmm. it was, it was very, their experience was very negative. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, choose for that, that breaks my heart. It, I hate that. Yeah. Um, but for me personally, it was really good. And, um, you know, I had a lot of, a lot of people reach out to me, you know, and, and after I came out and it was all very positive, um, a lot of, you know, kind words. And obviously you get the handful of assholes that, yeah, you know, course. Like, like you do everywhere else. Mm-hmm. Um, but overall, um, I was very pleased with, with the way things went after I came out. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, I felt, I felt good about it. Did you feel like it helped you find a community? Um, yeah, I mean, I still had to put in the effort to, like, put myself out there. Mm-hmm. You know, it, you know yeah. what I mean? To, to make, make friends and that sort of thing. But, yes, absolutely. I yeah. mean, I've made some great connections through coming out. Mm-hmm. Um and, uh, you know, I definitely wouldn't have made those connections or those friendships otherwise. So, yeah. yes, absolutely. Um, it, it helped a lot. Mm. Oh, good, good. Yeah, I mean, th- that's the thing. I think it it's easy to perceive it as kind of an isolating experience, but I don't really think, to be honest, I feel like you're opening yourself up to an entire community of people who can relate to the painful experiences that you've been through, who can relate to those suppressive experiences and emotions Emotions, and uh who can provide support so Mm -hmm. i think you know it might be isolating from the wrong type of people that you don't want in your life Mm -hmm. but i think in every other sense of the word it's like it really does open you up to an entire group of people who can really help support you Mm -hmm. um and make it a more positive experience even if it you know there are some elements of it that are negative Mm -hmm. because i know for me personally like answering this question at the beginning, when I first came out, yes, it was an extremely isolating experience because, you know, my parents essentially disowned me. I knew that people within my community would not be supportive whatsoever. Um, I was kind of stuck in a place where I wasn't able to be around or get support from other people outside of like my family and my community. So mm-hmm. initially, I was just like, I feel like I'm crazy <laughs> and I'm just mm-hmm. the only person who really believes in myself and the only person who wants to be authentic because everyone else is telling me that I shouldn't Mm -hmm. be gay, that Mm -hmm. I shouldn't choose this lifestyle, you know, the type of rhetoric that they kind of um, spread around. So it was extremely isolating at first, but it led to people and a community that provided so much more love than I ever experienced you know, growing up or from my own individual community. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I think there's just a level of empathy and connection and love that you can give to someone when you have gone through similar, you know, really dark experiences when you've walked in their shoes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, You, you understand. And the empathy that comes with that, um, sometimes (laughs) depending on the person, obviously, but, Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I feel like when you can relate on that level with someone, it Mm -hmm. helps, to build the connection um, deeper and stronger. Yeah, yeah. And even if it's not like forward facing within like the community that you're able to be around, like <laughs> even with like mm-hmm. other gay people I interact with, I'm not like, hi, this is my coming out story. I was disowned. What was yours? <laughs> you know, like <laughs> we don't like, there's not, there's kind of like an unspoken connection yeah i think that i definitely feel with a lot of people within the community which automatically made me feel so much more safe and accepted than Mm -hmm. i ever had previously Mm -hmm. before so that's kind of the good thing is that like even if you are in a really negative situation where you might be isolated or rejected by people who are really close in your life Mm -hmm. there's a whole group of people with their arms wide open you know ready to accept you and they definitely did that for me and i think now because that was like set no eight years ago i think that was like eight years ago Mm -hmm. the world has changed so much even just in eight years and i'd say exponentially 
culturally, I think people have become socially, people have become a lot more accepting of, mm -hmm. uh, you know, gay individuals and people are part of the LGBT plus community. So I'd say even more so now, yeah. you'll have a whole community of people ready to support you. Yeah. If you are worried about that. Right. Yeah. I, I totally agree. Yeah. I totally agree. Okay. So this person asked, what was the most difficult part of coming out? You go first. Me? <laughs> yes. Uh, why me first? <laughs> um, the most difficult part of coming out I think for me it was just having the balls to do it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> really um at that point i had already accepted myself but having the balls to just like all right fuck it i'm gonna do it mm -hmm. like that was the hardest part and then also thinking about all of the things that could go wrong mm -hmm. you know like how is my family gonna gonna react will they accept me will they reject me um and 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 also my friends you know mm -hmm. like you could potentially lose everyone mm -hmm. however um you know i i think along with that comes um a responsibility to take care of yourself mm -hmm. right like um if it's weighing you down and if it's if it's at a point where you're not a you're not giving your best giving yourself your best life and also mm -hmm. not giving yourself the opportunity to live your best life mm -hmm then you're going to have to sort of weigh like, is it worth it or is it not, mm -hmm. you know? And, and, um, I think number one, your safety has to come first, yeah. right? Make sure Absolutely. you're in a safe, you're in a safe place. Um, or, or you have someone that you can trust and mm -hmm. someone that can help you if things do go wrong. Um, but for me, you know, I, I was at the point where I was like, I really don't give a shit anymore. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, mm -hmm. um, you know, if, if people reject me, they do. And, they don't matter at yeah. that point, you know, exactly. and, th and that was sort of my mindset. But to get to that point, it was hard, mm -hmm. really hard. And I think that was the hardest part for me about mm -hmm. coming out. Yeah. The mental battles, man, like I think in some ways are like just as hard as any potential negative responses that you it could is. get. Because I mean, I feel like the biggest battle of coming out is really like coming to accept that within yourself, yourself. because yeah. Um, I know for me, like no one was harsher uh, against, you know, me coming out as gay or me being gay than myself. I don't know if that really makes sense, but like, you know, growing up with kind of like the internal battle that you're experiencing, like, of course, when I was young, I was just like, absolutely not. I'm not going to be gay. Like I cannot mm -hmm. be gay. This is horrible. This is the this worst. I'm going to hell. Like blah, blah, blah. Like mm -hmm. all the worst things that you could say, I was already telling myself. So having to get over that mental battle to the point of acceptance mm -hmm. completely alone without support from anyone. Um, I'd say like was probably the, I'd say just as difficult as dealing with the experiences of mm -hmm. my, you know, parents. Um, but of course I think, you know, my situation thankfully isn't too common and I think it's becoming less and less I think common, it's less and less common. But little still by little, happens. still happens, of All course. The time. Yeah, yeah. All the time. Um, but I know for me, like, I'd say those two were kind of like equally difficult in terms mm -hmm. of like the worst part. But once I actually like came out to like the my friends and like the public and like everything, um, that I felt like that was easy, you know, like that was a lot easier compared to that internal the, struggle you yeah. experience, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. I don't know, right. like for you. Was there a lot of that? Did When did you kind of like start to experience like that internal battle of like accepting yourself versus not accepting yourself? For a long time. Yeah. Like for, since I was like probably 13, 14 until mm. 20, 21, where I kind of accepted like, hey, this is what I am. Mm -hmm. um, and even at that time, it was still somewhat questionable, but mm -hmm. um you know, it was, it was, it was hard. I mean, it was hard just not having the resources really, Yeah. you know, not having the resources and then also not knowing who to reach out to or yeah. if I could reach out to anybody, you know? Yeah. Um, so it was, it was difficult, but, um, you know, like you helped me a lot having, you know, a friendship and someone who I can trust and, um, confide in, and that sort of thing was, was really, um, important for me to, mm not only um realize who i was and and you know what i wanted to to be but um you know also just knowing that i was safe mm -hmm. you know yeah um and i think 
having the support of regardless of who, who it is having that support and someone you can confide in is really important yeah when going through that it's that super stuff. important because you don't have to go through it alone and i hope that's what like a lot of people can learn and you know hopefully the message that we can share too is like we mm. kind of went through that experience completely alone without the support of anyone else and it doesn't have to be that way i know for me like the first person i came mm. out to my friend grace in high school the reason i came out to to her was because she had a bunch of gay friends um and she would literally like wear like pride um uh like little pins and things on her clothes and i was like okay i can tell that she's a safe person she will be okay like (laughs) she won't hate me if i come out you know which is why i think like um learning how to be a really good ally i think is is also super important and actually another question how can straight friends and family show support and love? Um, I think this is a really good question because, uh, you know, so much of the battle in terms of coming out is centered around what the response of the straight people in our lives mm. is going to be. Um, and I really think, you know, I, I think the answer is really simple, but not necessarily in an easy way, because I think if you can just show true empathy and love Mm -hmm. for someone to just let them know, like, even if you don't understand it, even if part of it confuses you and you don't necessarily fully agree with like certain aspects, wherever you are, if you can show them like, Hey, I will always be here for you. Mm -hmm. I will always love you. And I want to understand this. Help me understand, help me learn more so Mm -hmm. I can better understand who you are as a person and better support you just that is 99 percent better than <laughs> you know like so many of the experiences that i have had or right. other people have had with mm-hmm. you know friends and family rejecting them so if you can just show like that true willingness to understand mm-hmm. and empathize yeah. with them and then let them know that hey i'm still gonna love you no matter what yeah i think that's that's the best way you can mm-hmm. be an ally, you know, I don't know. Yeah. What about for you? Yeah, I, I agree 100%. I think, you know, for me, in my experiences, the best reactions were the ones where they're like, okay, that's great. I don't care. I'm mm-hmm. going to treat you the same. And, mm-hmm. and they did treat me the same, which is the way I wanted it to be. Mm-hmm. You know, um, you know, if, if they're your friends or your family, um, or if, you know, you just have to be there for them. And you don't necessarily have to understand everything because Mm -hmm. even for me, like there are certain people in our community that I don't understand. Mm -hmm. Right. I I don't, I I don't, I don't get it, but it's okay. Yeah. You know, I, I still respect them and I'm still supportive of them and, um, I'll try to understand, you know, and, and I think that's all we ask for is like, do your best to understand if you can't, that's fine, Mm -hmm. but don't love us any different. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Just, and I think also as well, I I do want to bring this up too, because I think it's important. If someone decides to come out to you, um, like before they've really come out to anyone else, Mm -hmm. um, take that trust seriously and don't fuck with it. They literally confided in you and like take that as a compliment Mm -hmm. as to like, they trust you yeah you know what i mean and like trust you with their life like mm-hmm. that is their life you yep. know and and um i mean it's it's not all of them but it is a big part of who they are and yeah. for them to like you know come out and and reach reach out towards you that way um you know it's a it's a big compliment yeah I it's think. a big sign of bravery and i yeah. think it's it's a deep level of trust and so you want to I would recommend like tread carefully, um, sh- practice love, show them love, protect their, you know, privacy. Mm-hmm. Um, because I, you know, there are experiences that I know of or that I've personally had where that hasn't happened. And it's just like kind of the ultimate betrayal. <laughs> and if you are like coming out to someone or confiding in someone else, mm-hmm. so like keeping that secret and, you know, being their, the support system. If someone is coming to you and coming out and they're scared to tell anyone else, yeah. that's the perfect opportunity to show them some extra love. So mm-hmm. then show them some like additional support, let them know that you'll always be there and just, right. You know, um, I just agree. show love I it's agree. really just all about love <laughs> it's, it's really not rocket science no like, it's not it's simple um mm-hmm. it's not always easy but um it's it's pretty simple it's not 
it's not anything that has to be overly complicated yeah don't worry about like all the little details and i know it can get a little bit overwhelming especially like in the modern era of like social media um where there is so much discourse around Mm -hmm. like what is okay as an ally what Mm -hmm. is not okay Mm -hmm. and i and i understand it and i definitely think like there there are things to improve within allyship Mm -hmm. but i think we still just need to focus on kind of like the central core aspect of like just showing true love and true empathy and honestly approaching like every situation, every interaction you have um, with someone who you know and love who's gay, like, would I want this? Like, Mm -hmm. would I want to hear what I'm saying? Would Mm -hmm. I want to receive this treatment? Mm -hmm. Is this the kind of support that I would want? If you could just think like that, then I think it takes away a lot of the issues. It does. um, Yeah. People get worked up over, you know? I agree. Yeah. Okay. The next question is when is the perfect time to come out to your parents? Mm gosh this is a loaded question um Mm. and it's always tricky because i actually get asked this a lot particularly by people who are closeted who haven't come out yet um i have seen a lot of sentiment online um from people within the lgbt plus community where they're like come out whenever you want the world you know the world needs to know Mm -hmm. fuck what anyone else says and honestly, I don't completely agree with that. I, agree. I, I disagree bad. with that. That's bad. Yeah. You can get in some like deep shit if that happens because yeah. like people are coming out at a younger, younger age, which I think mm-hmm. is amazing. But the younger you are, if you are living with parents or in a household that is extremely homophobic, mm-hmm. um, that would potentially like kick you out. Um, there are so many LGBT homeless youth, Mm -hmm. so many who get kicked out because they're coming out. And in my opinion, I don't think that's good at all. I don't think it's safe to come out. You need to come out when you are in a safe environment where you have the ability to support yourself. If you do have like homophobic parents, like I know for me personally, I was at the point where I was financially independent. I wasn't living at home. Um, when I decided to come out to my parents so that it would in case shit hit the fan in which it did, (laughs) it wouldn't like blow up in my face and I wouldn't be in danger and, you know, within risk. So Mm -hmm. I'd say wait until you are in a, not only physically safe environment, but also emotionally safe environment. It can be a really traumatic experience if you don't have accepting parents and you want to make sure you have people in your life who can be that emotional support system that you need when, when you go through that. But what do you think? Yeah. I, you hit the nail right on the head. Like, (laughs) You need to make sure that you're in a safe place. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, take care of your health first. Like, and and make sure, like, okay, if if you're, say, you feel like, okay, I'm ready to do this and I have to do it, and you know, your parents may be sort of, or your family may be kind of teeter tottering. Mm-hmm. Um, make sure that you have somewhere else that you can go, yeah, or or someone that you can confide in because. Um, you know, if you decide to do that and shit, it's the fan, like you said, mm-hmm. it's too late, Yeah. you know, and then you're going to be in a freaking shithole, yeah. you know, and, and you're like, now what do I do? Yeah. Right. And especially if you're underage, like there's not a lot you can do, mm-hmm. you know? So, um, yeah, I mean, it, it's hard because, you know, you don't want to hold yourself back from experiencing a lot, Mm -hmm. but at the same time, like you have to take care of your health first and your safety first. That comes Um, first. And, and that comes with like, do you have a place to live? Mm -hmm. Can you put food on the table? You know, all the things that come with living. Yeah. um, Everyday living and and the necessities. I mean, and that's why I think it's like, it's important that people don't put an expectation on a timeline for coming out because it really is different for everyone. There is no timeline. There's no timeline. There's so many people who like, well, are in their late twenties, you know, who still are living at home, may not be in a good home environment that might be best for them financially, who are still in school. Mm -hmm. So many different situations of, you know, people who, are at any stage in life who aren't ready to come out yet. And I don't think it's good to be like, you should come out. Everyone mm-hmm. should come out. Like fuck what people yeah. say, because it's, I think it's really insensitive to the situations that people are in. However, I think it is important that if you are in a very suppressive environment like that, mm-hmm. in my opinion, 
I think you should make every effort to try and get out of that situation as quickly as possible because physical, like we were saying, physical safety is important, but mental health is also extremely important. important. Yeah. And if you're in an environment like that, that's just constantly reminding you of your worthlessness because you are gay or, you know, any, any other um, identity that's, that's dangerous for Mm -hmm. your mental health. And I, I think you should, get the hell out of there as fast as you can yeah yeah <laughs> I know, that's and, my, that's and i think opinion. like get out of there but make sure like you you have a place to go mm-hmm. or you yeah. know what i mean or, yeah. or someone that you can trust mm-hmm. you know what i mean and i think um obviously if you just need to get out of there for your own sake and your mm-hmm. own mental health then by all means do it but um you know i would i would suggest probably trying to yeah to have something set up aside from that you know where where you can go and and still you know be able to have food and shelter and yeah that definitely but we are focusing on kind of like the negative part yeah. <laughs> i think nine times out of ten from what i've been able to see and from the people i've interacted with in the community the worries and anxieties and stress you have around coming out it's typically a lot it's going to be a lot better it's than what you're expecting i know for, yeah i know for me my expectations were so low when i was coming out because i was like preparing myself for the, for the worst, worst yeah. thing possible and then um it was great so then i was like well damn this is awesome you know <laughs> um i don't know what the hell i was worried about but um but yeah i think a lot of us are expecting the worst and yeah. most of the time i would say most of the time especially nowadays think things seem to be a little bit more accepting you know yeah. and and um you know, Way more. society is a little bit in a different place so yeah it's i feel like it's usually gonna go really well and you can do little things to kind of like feel it out with your parents you know like Absolutely. show them a, a movie that features like gay romance <laughs> or like you know um get their <laughs> opinion on news about like things that are happening within the lgbt community you know just kind of like feel it out like get a vibe <laughs> and just see how it works and i feel like the majority of times for for most people um from yeah. what i've been able to see you know, even if your parents don't or your family or people in your life don't initially seem accepting, mm-hmm. uh, give them time to understand it. Yeah. And, and they will. There's a, like a quote that I love or a, kind of a mantra that I really believe in that helps like provide a lot of clarity for me personally, which is like, look, it took me I don't know, like 18 years to come to terms with coming <laughs> with being gay. Exactly. You know, the people in your life may not be able to get it immediately and that's okay they may need a little bit of time and that's fine and that's what i've seen for like most people even if they have a really bad experience first coming out Mm -hmm. a few years later a few months later a few years later it's like night and day difference Mm -hmm. um that's i feel like that's how my experience was with my mom um you know my mom has always been supportive of me in everything that i did and when i came out to her she was she wasn't like she was just hesitant Mm -hmm. you know and i and looking back at it I took at I took it as oh my god she doesn't love me because she's mm-hmm. not like one hundred percent supportive you know mm-hmm. what I mean but um, you know the the reality is it took me so long to accept myself like how can I expect her mm-hmm. to have the perfect response at the perfect time you know immediately exactly. when shoot it took me freaking forever to figure that out myself mm-hmm. you know what I mean so um, you know I think everyone's experience is different obviously but um, you know, if, if they, if you feel like they don't support you, that may not always be the situation and they may just need some time to, um, sort of process, mm-hmm. process everything. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think compassion and patience is like so important on both sides. Um, and I think just, you know, give people time to kind of grapple with it, to kind of sit with it, mm-hmm. um, see how they feel. And then, you know, um, sometimes things take time and that's okay. But yeah. in the majority of cases, I think it's, it's an overall positive experience. You yeah. know, we got so many more questions than that, but we took a while to respond. Sorry, y'all. We, These, <laughs> we do. Well, we I do. don't, he does. Ooh, the shade. Oh my God. Wow. Get the fuck off my podcast. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, I like, it was really good to hear like your full responses. And like, as we kind of finish this episode, I, I want to hear like from you, what would you say is like your top piece of advice to anyone out there who may be struggling with coming to terms with being a part of the LGBT community? Um, that's a hard one because I think everyone's journey is different, mm-hmm. but, uh, I know in my experience, um, try to be brave for yourself 
put yourself first mm-hmm. um, always. And, and that really applies to anything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I'm still learning that now. Uh, yeah. But, um, but yeah, like put yourself first, take care of yourself and, um, you know, try to build meaningful relationships. Yeah. You know, like with you, with you, I, I've had such a great friendship and I literally, I can trust you with anything. And, mm-hmm. Um, you know, because of that, my life literally changed and, um, you know, I was able to come out, um, you know, and, and I've had so many great opportunities through that. Um, you know, I've, and I've really found myself, um, through coming out and, and I did that because of the support from you. So, Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it just shows like you need that, you need that, um, community and the support and, Mm -hmm. um, you know, to be brave. Yeah, absolutely. I love that piece of advice. That's, <laughs> it's really good. I And I completely agree. I feel like it's a difficult journey of like trying to find that self-acceptance and self-love. But even if you aren't able to find that, find people who can you know provide you with that, who can show you absolutely, that yeah. love and support that you really deserve. Because not mm-hmm. only will they make the journey so much easier, um, they'll just enrich your life so much. And mm-hmm. I can definitely say that for you you know, um, adding so much light and inspiration and uh, to my life, you know, personally, as well as like other people that I've been able to find along the way in the journey of like coming out and discovering myself. I think if you can surround yourself with people like that, it'll make the journey of self-acceptance way more easy and just get you to a place of self-love that you deserve, you know? Mm -hmm. So I don't know. Oh, yeah. that was such a good way to end out that the episode. Was, I mean, I know. thank you so much, Todd, for coming on the podcast. I really appreciate it. I know this is like super ratchet and like kind of last minute, but it's okay. <laughs> I appreciate we it. We do our best work like that. Yeah. So. yeah. That's how we roll. <laughs> That's <Hey>. it. <laughs> um, again, where can people find you if they want to follow you on social media? Um, Instagram is probably the best. Um, my handle is taddy808, T A D D Y 808. Awesome. And thank you again. I appreciate thank it so you. much. Thanks. Thank you everyone to watch who, thank you everyone who listened to this episode. <laughs> um, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the Just Position YouTube channel. Stay tuned for other really exciting episodes. We have a bunch that we've already done with incredible guests. So make sure you watch those. This has been a presentation of Cadence 13 on Odyssey Studio. New episodes out every Thursday, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And we will see you guys in the next episode. Mwah. Ooh.